Hey folks, pretty common problem to work in physics is uh, these Antwood machine problems. And the idea there is we've got uh, two objects that are tied together by a string and there's some kind of a pulley in between there. So maybe they're both hanging down when one falls, the other rises, or maybe one's up on a counter and one's falling. So as this one falls, it pulls the other one across. Um, so that's what we're looking at now. And that's called a modified Atwood machine. Um, there are a couple ways to set problems up like this. You can group objects together as a system, and I'll have another video about that approach. Or you can use an approach where you keep them separate the whole time and just use um, uh, Newton's second law and Newton's third law to discuss interactions and those interactions on these individual particles, or, or individual objects, rather. Um, so let's set it up now using that Newton's third law approach without grouping these things together as a system. So in this problem, we have a 5 kilogram object up on the uh, counter and we have a 10 kilogram one hanging down and we have a frictionless surface for that 5 kilogram block. So first step in any problem like this is to draw a free body diagram and we've got two objects so we'll do two free body diagrams. So for that 5 kilogram we're going to have a normal force upward and we're going to have a gravitational force downward and since we're going to have a gravitational force on the 10 kilogram as well let's all go ahead and call that FG5 for the 5 kilogram object. Those are both vectors. And then we're also going to have a tension force pulling this one over to the right, Ft. All right, and then for the 10 kilogram object here, we're going to have a little simpler picture. We've got gravity going downward on this one. And that one would be Fg, and we'll call that 10, Fg10. And then upward, we have another tension force. And actually, it's going to be the same size tension force as the previous one because we've got just this pulley in there. And the pulley changes the direction for the force, but not the amount for that force. So indirectly, this is uh, two objects acting on each other. Uh, the, the rope allows them to interact with each other. And so those two forces have to be equal in size and opposite in direction. The pulley just changes that direction piece to it. So these are still equal in size, still a single tension throughout that rope. We also can say that as one slides across the counter, the other one's going to fall downward, and that motion is going to be linked as well. So if this one slides across the counter at one meter per second, this one's going to be falling at one meter per second. If this one's accelerating at one meter per second squared, this one has to be accelerating at one meter per second squared as well. So we'll need to use that in uh, the solution for our problem. Now without friction, we don't really have to think about uh, the up and down forces on that five kilogram block up on the counter. Um, we certainly could, and if there were friction, we'd want to use that to solve for the frictional force up there. But for now, we'll just skip it. So in the x direction on this 5-kilogram uh, block, we can say acceleration in the x is equal to the net force in the x divided by the mass, and acceleration in the x, I'm just going to call that A. And, you know, what? let's go ahead and say that's going to be the positive direction. So A is the positive direction. That's the direction that uh, that 5-kilogram that one is going to slide when we let the, go, those go. So the 5-kilogram will slide to the right. The 10-kilogram will slide down or will fall downward. Um, just so my uh, signs come out the same way, I'm going to go ahead and call this direction the positive x direction and this one the negative x direction. And then over here on the 10 kilogram, I'm going to call downward the positive direction for that one. That'll be the positive y direction and the negative y going up this way. That way if I have, say, a positive 1 meter per second squared for the 5 kilograms acceleration, it'll be five, positive 1 meter per second squared for the 10 kilogram as well. They'll be accelerating in the same direction, so the sign will be the same. Uh, so if, if you change it, though, if you have upward be the positive direction on that 10 kilogram, all that means is that when I have positive 1 for the 5 kilogram, I'd have ne negative 1 meters per second squared for the 10 kilogram. So watch out for that. All right, so we'll have positive A. That's going to be caused by just the tension force, positive Ft, divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms. Okay, not much we can do with that, so let's leave it there, and we'll go over to the uh, the hanging box. So we'll have acceleration in the y, up and down is the only direction that we have to deal with here, is equal to net force in the y, divided by the mass, and we decided to call that acceleration value a, and that's going to be in the positive direction. And that'll be caused by, well, we've got a gravitational force downward, so that'll be positive fg10, downward being our positive direction again, and then upward we've got a tension force, so that'll be a negative Ft. 
and that'll be divided by 10 kilograms. All right, now I see I screwed up on, yep, on the mass over on this one here. Let's fix that. That one wasn't uh, 10 kilograms, that was 5 kilograms. There we go. Okay, now there's one more piece I can do here, that force of gravity acting on the 10 kilogram uh, box. I can find a value for that. So I have positive A, 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, that'd be positive 98 newtons. And a negative FT, and that'll equal 10 kilograms. Okay, so now we've got two equations with two unknowns. We know the accelerations have to be the same. We know the tension forces have to be the same. So we have uh, the same two unknowns in those two equations. We can solve this then as a system of equations. Instead of grouping objects together as a system of objects, we kept them separate, but now we have to solve a system of equations. Neat that it works out that way, I guess. Um, I've got both these things set equal to A, so let's go ahead and set those two expressions equal to one another. So I'll say that Ft over 5 kilograms is equal to 98 newtons minus Ft over 10 kilograms. I need to get Ft isolated here. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 10 kilograms. And when I do that, on the left side, I've got 10 kilograms times Ft divided by 5 kilograms. The kilograms cancel, and the 10 divided by 5 leaves me with 2Ft equals. And on the right side, I've got that fraction with the 10 kilograms on the bottom multiplying by 10 kilograms on top, so those two will cancel completely. It leaves me with 98 newtons minus Ft. And I can add the Ft to both sides, and I end up with 3Ft equals 98 newtons and then divide both sides by 3, and let's grab the calculator for this. Maybe. Uh, okay, calculator is not one to pop up, so we'll just do this in our head. Let's see, 99 newtons divided by 3 would be 33, so that'd be 32.6 repeating. Call it 32.7 newtons. So now that we've got the uh, tension force there, 32.7 newtons, let's take that back to an earlier equation and we can solve for the acceleration. So like up here, we've got acceleration is tension divided by the 5 kilograms. Or we could put it in over here, acceleration is 98 newtons minus the tension force divided by 10 kilograms. Either way, we'll get the same answer. So let's just use the easier equation. So acceleration is equal to the tension force now, which is 32.7 newtons divided by the mass there was 5 kilograms. There we go. And so we get an acceleration then of 6.53 meters per second squared. That'll be to the right for the box on the counter and downward for the box that's hanging. So we kept the two objects separate. We had to keep in mind that the tension force they each experienced was the same size. It doesn't have to be a tension force. You know, maybe they interact with a frictional force or a normal force. So uh, different problems have different force types there. Since they're moving together, they also had the same acceleration in this problem that was important as well, and we were able to solve. Uh, for another example of solving a problem like this, but with another method, um, do check out my video about um, solving two objects problems using the systems approach. I'll put a link in the description for that. Thanks very much for watching. If you learned something from this, by all means, uh, hit the like or subscribe button or share it with somebody you think uh, might benefit from this. Thank you again.